The next loop is called the while loop. Now, you remember I said the repeat loop or the for loop is when you know exactly how many times you're going to repeat something. Now, if you just apply your knowledge of English without knowing any code, and just something about how the repeat loop used to work, what do you think this command tells the tank? Anyone? Hello? Yes. While the party is clear, you move forward. Yeah, what does that mean? On the screen? On, the, on your phone? Uh, when the tank move forward while the party is clear, so there'll be... So when will it stop? If it comes to an obstruction or some kind of... Yeah. Either when it hits a wall or when it hits a, a stack of rubble or, interesting, when it hits the star, because then it's the early termination. Okay, so while path is clear means keep on walking until there's nothing in my path. So it keeps on walking until I hit a wall, keep on walking until I hit a stack of rubble. And then the early termination rule says, if I'm walking and I reach the star, I will stop also. Okay. Right, now see whether you can work out. Now, this will probably only work for guys that have tokens. First, uh, how would you redo level 11 using the while loop instead of the repeat? I think it's while you wait and the path is clear, you move forward. Yes, with the start in front of it. So with the start. Yeah. So that that solution would get me to the star. Now notice as I said before, obviously it's not hitting a wall, it's not hitting a, a stack of rubble, but it will stop when it reaches the star. So the advantage of this while loop. Now, does it differs from the repeat loop? When you write the while loop, you don't know how many times. You don't need to go and count the number of steps. You just say to it, walk, until you hit something. So that's a, the that's a definition of a while loop. It, it, it keeps on repeating while a certain condition is true. That's, that's coding. In a while loop, in normal coding, you, you will say, while x is less than 4. Uh, so while this condition is true, do whatever is in the body of the loop. Okay, and once you've got this loop, other, other activities become easier. Okay, so now I want to take you one step deeper. We're going into the real difficult stuff now. This is called the nested construct. I'll explain that now. But before I explain it, can anyone look at this? Apply everything that I've told you now, and please tell me how many times will the tank move forward, assuming there's nothing in its way or whatever. The nine, nine times? Nine times? How did you get to nine times? Because at the top, so it repeat moving forward three times, but then on the bottom it's saying that that would happen three times. Okay. Right? Or no. Yeah. Is there anyone with a different solution before I give the answer? Okay, so that is correct. Remember the original definition of a repeat? You've got the repeat here just next to the start. Below it, it says how many times is something is repeated. And then I said, everything on top of the repeat is the body of the loop. So in this case, you have another repeat, which is the body of the loop. Remember, the body of the loop is the thing that's repeated. So what is the body of the loop? The body of the loop is moving forward three times. So moving forward three times is repeated three times, which takes the tank forward nine times. And it's very important to understand this nested loops because you, you'll start needing them 
probably after level 15 or 16 upwards, but you won't get far in tanks if you can't understand the concept of a nested loop. So I've got my first repeat. It says my body is repeated three times. What is my body? Another repeat that moves forward three times. So in the end, the tank is moving nine times. Okay, now fasten your seatbelts. This is, this is not a tanks game, but it's a pen and paper activity I developed for a company. It's called Supercopter. It uses the same commands and tanks. The walls are still barriers. What you have here are cold plants all over the grid. They're not barriers. The helicopter flies over them, but it stops against the wall. When the helicopter flies over a cold plant, the cold plant is changed into a solar plant. So it's a renewable environmental activity. Now remember what I've told you about nested constructs and look at the code on the left hand side and i'm going to give you a while now and i want you to tell me where does the copter end where does the helicopter end it's here pointing upwards at the moment and how many coal plants does it fly over where does the helicopter end and how many coal plants does it fly over You won't be able to show me, so I'm just going to give you, and you can just work it out in your mind or on a piece of paper, and then I'll show you the solution. But I'm going to give you a while to think. You need to very, think very clearly on the code on the left-hand side. What is, what is the body of the repeat loop? That's the important thing to understand. What is the body of the repeat loop? What is repeated three times? If someone wants to try and tell me in English how they understand it uh, without visuals, you're welcome. But can someone in English tell me what will happen once and then the same thing will happen the second time? What, will, what is that first body, what has happened there when, when the body of the loop is done the first time? Okay. The, uh, Go for it. Uh, the wild way it will move. I'm saying it will move forward uh, until it hit something. No, until it tear. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, the, the coal plant is not an obstacle. It flies over a coal plant. Okay. Um, I see you, Fairhaven, had their hand up again. Hi. It says while yes. the path is clear, it will move forward three times. Yeah. But it will move forward. And if it hits an obstruction, then it's going to turn right. Okay, yeah. You've got it more or less right, but the move forward three times is not correct. Can okay, I uh, take a guess? Go for it. Okay, so the helicopter is, while the path is clear, is going to move forward. Once it hits the top wall, it's going to turn right, and then yeah. it'll complete that loop again three times. So move forward while the path is cleared, turn right. Move forward while the path is cleared, turn right. So effectively, I think you cover one, two, three, four, five coal stations. Yeah, I don't know where you get five, but let me show you. Okay, but you've got, you've gave me the right solution, but you, I don't know how you get five. So let's explain to you. So the first time, oh, sorry. I need to get, yeah, so I can play around. The first time the body of the loop is done, it says, while my path is clear, move forward. So it will fly up to here, right? And the turn right is part of the body of the repeat loop. So the turn right will take the helicopter to turn right. That's the end of the first repeat. And then the second repeat, while my path is clear, move forward until I hit a wall and then turn right. So that's the end of the second repeat. And then the third repeat, while my path is clear, move forward until I hit the wall 
and then turn right. So the helicopters can end up there. Does that make sense? Sorry, I was being a little overzealous. I repeated my loop a couple more times. <laughs> yeah, you did it. Yeah, if you, you can you, actually if you do it times six, you can remove five culprits. Yeah. So should I just repeat this for, for you guys that you just see what I'm talking about? So it's very important to note that the repeat repeats something three times. What does it repeat three times? Everything on top of it. It first does a while loop and then it does a turn right. So the first time the repeat is done, it flies until it hits the wall and then it turns right. The second time it does the repeat, it flies until it hits a wall and then it turns right. And the third time it does a repeat, it flies until it hits the wall and then it turns right and it stops there. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and now I want you to look at level 15. Notice what we've given you on the right hand side is exactly the same code that I gave you in the helicopter example. The body of the loop is a while after a turn right and after that a turn right. And can you see that this will solve level 15? My tank will start. The first repeat, it will go until it hits that wall and then it will turn right. The second repeat will be the while loop that takes me until it hits this wall and it turns right. And the third repeat makes use of the early termination. It moves while its path is clear, but as soon as it hits the star, it stops. So this is the optimal or the best solution for level 15. What, what learners do often when they play it the first time, and if you do play with learners, you, you'll, you can observe, observe, they'll have a for loop somehow that takes them, yeah, past the first wall, and then they go down, and then they turn left and they go to the star, uh, which uh, is not really, it's a solution, it can work, but then once you've done the while loop with them and optimal code, you can explain this to them. I'm really getting to higher grade stuff here. Now you won't do this with grade twos or threes probably, but you'll know what your learners can do. Notice what the if statement says. It says, if my path is blocked, so the tank is somewhere on the grid, if my party path is blocked, I can do something. If the block is yes, I put a token here and it will do something. If the block is no, if the path is clear, on the right hand side I can put a token. So I've got a choice of what I want to do. And I'm going to give you, look at what I'm doing here. I'm just going to talk through this now and you can come back later and watch the recording. First of all, what we notice is a repeat that's infinite. So this if question is asked infinitely. Now you realize that it will be asked infinitely until you hit a star. So it says, if my path is blocked, so if the tank is currently against the wall, then it turns right. If it's not against the wall, if there's nothing in front of it, it moves forward. So you can see kind of a tank moving and it hits a wall and then it turns right. By, by asking this if question every time, infinitely, or until it reaches a star. So if you look at level 12, this is also a solution for level 12, although it's not really necessary, but it proves the point. So your tank starts where it's now and it says, is my path blocked? No, it's not blocked, so I can move forward. Then it says again, is my path blocked? No, it's not blocked, so I can move forward. And then you hear against the wall. Then it says again, is my block path blocked? Yes, it is blocked, so I must turn right. So I'm pointing down. And then again, is my path blocked? No, it's not, I move forward. Is my path blocked? No, it's not, I move forward. Is my path blocked? Yes, it is. I turn right. And then I ask the question two more times and I hit the star. 
So this is just another way of solving uh, level 12. Just to take you back, if you want to go and play, this solution here would also solve level 12. So it's actually just a, another way of saying the same thing. Which takes me to level 15. And that same if solution with the infinite questions also solves level 15. Okay, now I might have gone slightly too fast here at the end, but I hope that you more or less understand the logic. Once you have your tokens, you can start using this. For those who are really playing tanks, the if statement only becomes necessary, I think, at level 31. Because I've shown you that the if and the while is more or less an equivalent thing. It does the same thing. But at level 31, you run out of repeats. You need more than two repeats. So then you've got to start using the if statement in an infinite. But you'll see when you get, now you run out of whiles, I think. So then you need a third while, which you can simulate using a repeat. But that's very far down the road, level 31, I think. Okay, then I'm quickly going to show ranges because once you've got your games, you can use the same tokens. It's just a different app called Rangers powered by Tangible. Uh, and Rangers works exactly the same than Tanks. The only difference is you don't, you're not trying to reach the game poacher. So you've got a, a, a rhinoceros, a game ranger car, and a game poacher. You're trying to point your car towards the game poacher and then you shoot, and it shoots a net that catches the game poacher. The reason we did ranges is because we tried to go into Europe and other countries in Africa, and the, the security theme of tanks wasn't very popular. And obviously, we couldn't shoot the ranger. So shoot in this thing means shoot a net at the ranger, so we catch him or her. Okay. So if you look at this solution, your, your, you move forward three times. Your ranger, your ranger car turns to the left, so it points towards this, the ranger, up uh, towards the game poacher, and then you would shoot your net to catch the poacher. But you can only play with rangers once you've done tanks, I think. Rangers is just it's slightly new challenges because, yeah, you'll see it's fun. Okay, I'm done. I'm just going to give you some hints of two or three slides. Whenever you play this game, your learners obviously must play in groups. Please don't let them play one-on-one. -on -one. It's a group activity. Uh, COVID allowed, obviously. Uh, but we prefer, I find that a group of five or six is kind of your, of five is best. Six works, more than that is too big. You can have tournaments. So if once you've downloaded the Tanks app, you'll see that you can reset. It shows which levels have been completed. So you can reset all your phones, get the kids in a room, and say, how many levels can you finish in 30 minutes? On the right-hand side, we had a tournament with 120 learners participating. And it's very easy then to find a winner because they can you can literally see on the screen how many levels have been completed. Something, if you're working with younger kids, I'm just going to show you a short video and then explain to you what happens. This was teacher training in Bloemfontein. So now I want you to all come to the mat, like grade three. We have a penguin that's thirsty. The penguin is thirsty. The penguin is pointing that way. You both move forward, turn left, turn right. Commands at your table. I want you to look at this. I'm going to pack out the commands on your black cloth with those boats commands I gave you and get the penguin to the water bottle. Woo! The hand sanitizer is a penguin and a water bottle is the food. Teachers have to pack out the commands using the small cards so that the penguin can avoid the wall and get to the bottle. What I'm trying to show you is that I often find that before you take learners into the Tanks app, 
Let them do physical movements on a grid. Now, there's different ways of doing that. That uh, grid mat to be provided with the boat skating kit for younger kids, but you can simulate grid very easily in the real world. These are just three examples of how teachers have done it. Most places have tiles, or the, on the right hand side, they just use A4 pages. So you create your own grid and you get the kids to move forward, turn left, turn right, physical. I think it works better to do this before you go into the actual app. Just watch this activity. It's in a school in Tata on the left hand side. And if you watch the body language, there's a lot of problem solving discussion going on here in the physical world before they go into the actual app. I, I just love this photo. In every group, there's stuff happening. Um, interesting, I showed it to a teacher that likes discipline in the class and she was horrified until I explained to her this is <laughs> education probably needs to work. This is in a class where they blindfold the child and give him her commands and she moves in the class. So there's very many ways to make this physical before you before you get into the actual tanks app. I'm done. I think the most important thing that we try to do to, with tanks is not make the kids software developers. You can't. Is get them getting them aware of what programming is, a list of instructions that you give to a computer. And and then get them to start dreaming. This is Yolanda Jordan that read the Da Vinci code and all she knew about computers after reading that code was algorithms and cloud computing. That got her to dream in grade nine in a rural town in South Africa. And five years later, she registered for a computer degree with us. So even if you don't have fancy computers, you can't teach them coding afterwards. You, you've expanded their career dreams and, that's, and you've triggered their minds to think in terms of problem solving. Uh, did you did you hear the boy, the audio with the video just now or not? No, we didn't. Um, yeah, I do think there is an done. option to share audio yeah. as well. Yeah, I forgot to do that. Maybe let me do it quickly. Just give me a second because I love what this little guy says. I'm just um, just while you're busy doing that. The other thing, just from a, a teaching perspective and, and sure, background that I've got. Um, I love the, the fact that it's multiple representations where you're going from the physical and then to the application on the app and that there's so many different solutions, you know, varying in the optimization, but that there's so many different ways of solving the same problem and that we can, you know, you can work through them repetitively to improve it every time. Yeah, we, we've, I've, got, I've got coding evangelists that are working in different communities, not teachers, they go from school to school and, and the, the lady that works in the Kuno area where Mandela stayed came back to me after three to four weeks and she was excited when the kids, the learners started debating strategies, different solutions, and that's what we want. Oh, that's My awesome. My wife had, had given kids lifts into the township to home and she could hear them in the back seat talking about different strategies to solve a certain level. And that's problem solving. That's real life problem solving, which we like seeing while they play tanks. The excitement is mounting. It will help me when I want to work at VW so that I can program the, ro the robots there at VW. That's what it's for me about getting them to dream about one day having a career in computer science or programming or engineering or whatever. Uh, it's, it's planting that dream. Uh, that's one of the main things. You are welcome for people watching now or watching the recording. If you want just an attendance certificate that says that you've attended a TANKS training session, we can we can email it to you. So you can just email me if it's important to you or you could use it for points as a teacher. Quite a few teachers like getting this. Uh, while I'm on this, when you're working with learners and you've got specific uh, learners that move quick and once they've reached level 35, you can also ask me for a certificate. Uh, we, we send out certificates for learners that reach, get up to level 35. Even if they work in a group, we'll give a certificate to the whole group. You're welcome. Whenever you want to. I've just sent off two to Soweto earlier this week. That's my contact details for those watching the recording. And you're welcome to follow us on Facebook. 
And I would love you to post photos and tag us or send photos to me. Um, I'm blunt. Uh, this project works through corporate sponsorships, so I can give the stuff out for free. Um, the school in the box all got their games for free because of a corporate sp sponsor. So the more stories I get, the better feedback I can give to sponsors and the more people I can reach. Uh, thank you very much. Um, any last comments, questions? Um, if you're past level 16 and you start struggling, there are videos you can requ request from me, or you're welcome to start asking me and I can guide you further.